Okay, we're going to do indices today. Indices. Or powers is another name. And what do I mean by that? Very simple example before we begin. 2 cubed uh, is an example of using powers or indices. The 2 is what we call the base. So this thing here is called the base. And the 3, we call that the, well that's the index, or the power. Okay, and index is singular, there's more than one, plural, call it indices. What does 2 cubed mean? It means 2, the base, is multiplied by itself 3 times. So 2 times 2 times 2. Alright, that's what it means. And we can break this up, so we know that the first bit here, 2 times 2 is 4, and then times that by another 2, and we get 8. Okay. So, anyway, that's just a very simple example, but uh, we're going to uh, use some, uh, look at the laws that involve powers uh, in, with algebra. So let's have a look. First example is, I'm going to do, say, 2 cubed, like we just looked at, but then that is multiplied by 2 to the power of, let's say, uh, 4. Okay. So, let's just break that down. So we know that 2 cubed means 2 times 2 times 2, and we know that 2 to the power of 4 means 2 times itself 4 times. Alright, so there's the 4 lots. And don't forget, these are all multiplied by itself, so there's a multiply in the middle there as well. So if you look at this, it looks like we've got 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is a bit of a mouthful, but clearly what we're doing is we're multiplying 2 by itself 7 times. So we could have said, well, that is 2 to the power of 7. Okay, 2 to the power of 7. And when you look at this, where did that 7 come from? I mean, we've got a 3 there and we've got a 4 there. And uh, actually, if you add these 3 and the 4 together, you do get that 7, don't you? You see, so in fact that is the, the first rule actually, so in fact if we could, instead of using um, numbers, we use letters, we could say A to the power of, let's say, M, multiplied by A to the power of N is equal to A to the power of these two things added together, alright? So that's a rule. Uh, notice I've not put a multiply sign in between the A and G in here, see, because we don't need that with algebra. So I'm going to get my rubber and move that out. See if I can do that again. There we go. That's right. Um, so we can put a let's put a box around that because that's a formula if you like. You need to know that's really important. Let's do another example of that. Um, let's have a look. Let's say we've got uh, 3 this time to the power of 4 multiplied by 3 to the power of 5. So that's they're going to be using the rule. It's going to be 3 to the power of 4 plus 5, uh, which is 3 to the power of 9, isn't it? Just add those two together. Okay, it's a very simple example. Let's look at the next rule. This time instead of multiplying, we're going to divide. So let's choose a different base instead of twos and threes. Let's choose, let's choose four now. Four to the power of, let's say, six. And that is going to be divided by four to the power of, I don't know, let's say two. So we could look at what this means. Um, this on the top is going to be four times itself, oh gosh, six times, I'm going to write this out six times now, one, two, three, four, five, that's six isn't it, and then we're going to divide them by four times four. So, if you know a little bit about algebra, you know that these things on the top and bottom of the multiplied, they can cancel each other out, so I could just cancel these two out with any of the top two, and you can see that we're left with the ones on the top 
let's choose a different color. Let's have a look at these ones here. These are the only ones that are left. Four times four times four times four. So we've got clearly got four to the power of four there, haven't we? And where did that four come from? Well, we might look at this six and the two and decide that it's actually come from this time six minus two is four, isn't it? That gives you that power there. And indeed, that is the rule. Let's write down the rule over here on the left. So let's generalize it this time with algebra. So we can use letter A to represent the base uh, to the power of M. M is a number and divided by A to the power of N. Different number. And that's going to be A to the power of M minus N. Let's put that in a box. That's our formula. Should we do another example of that? Yes, why not? So let's choose a different number. Let's choose 5 to the power of uh, 7 divided by 5 to the power of 3. So we know now from our formula that this is going to be 5 to the power of 7 minus 3. All right. And 7 minus 3 is 4. Okay. Let's look at another of these examples. Let's see now. Um, we could have something like 2 to the power of 3 cubed. But what if that 2 cubed is raised to another power? Let's say that whole thing is squared. Let's have a look at what that would be. So we've got the 2 cubed, this bit here. So that's going to be 2 times 2 times 2, alright, that bit, but that is then squared, so we can put that as being squared, and well, what does that equal? Well that equals 2 times 2 times 2, if it's squared it's multiplied by itself, so here it is, 2 times 2 times 2, and we can see there that we've got 6 lots of 2, so this is, let's put some equal signs in here, so this is going to be 2 to the power of 6. So let's look, let's see if we can code this one out. So we've got a 3 and a 2 here, and we ended up with a 6. So can you see the pattern there? It was actually, you know, what can we do? We were multiplying them, weren't we? 3 times the 2 was 6. So let's put that in a formula over here. Let's say we have a to the power of m, which is then raised to another power n. So it's like a power of a power. And that equals a to the power of mn. Just m multiplied by n. Alright, there you go. And the formula. Uh, I could do an example for you underneath. Let's say we've got a to the power of 3, which is then raised to the power of 5. So we know that that is going to be a to the power of 3 times 5. Okay. Uh, which is 15, isn't it? Okay. Uh, these are the three main rules. There are some other rules that we can look at. Um, but um, there's some of the main ones. Let's have a look at another one. Let's say we've got um, a... No, we're not doing that. We're doing numbers, aren't we? So let's say we've got 9 to the power of a half. Okay, so 9 to the power of a half. This is a strange one because we've got to, not squaring it or cubing it, but we're raising it to the power of a half. So uh, I just got to know that this one, this is actually a square root. So this is a simple to the square root of 9. Uh, and the square root of 9 is 3 because 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, so the generalized form of this is, well, we could say that a to the power of a half is the same as the square root of a, but there's a little bit more than that to it. In fact, the general form is a to the power of m over n, uh, which is a to the power of m, and it's the nth root, not the second root, the nth root, it's an n. It's an n? And then get my rubber out and sort that out. That should be an N. Yeah, or T. 
tidy this up. That's an N. There you go. Alright. So, uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, well, let me give you an example. Let's say that we have got... Uh, let's see, let's go A to the power of 7 over 2. That is the same as... A to the power of 7. And it is the second root, which we usually call the square root. That's a 7 by the way there. We just call it the square root, but... Um, Call it second root just to be complete. Let's put a box around these two here. Okay. So these are fractional roots. So when if you've got a fraction on your root, then it's, uh, sorry, when you've got a fraction as an index, then you know that you've got a root. If it's a half, then it's going to be a square root. If it's a cubed, if it's a, if it's a third, so it'd be a cubed root, etc. Uh, and the final one for us to look at is uh, inverses really. Let's say we've got um, let's say we've got something like 2 to the minus 3. Well that is the same as 1 over 2 to the plus 3. Okay, 1 over 2 cubed. Uh, which you could then say is 1 over 8. Okay. So, uh, the way we can think about this, actually, is if I put a different colour on here, 2 is really 2 over 1, isn't it? 2 over 1, 2 whole ones. And can you see what we've done here? We've actually inverted it. We've inverted it, which means to turn it upside down. Okay, see what And when we do that, you notice that the, the index changes sign. It goes from a minus 3 to a plus, there's an invisible plus there, isn't there? Okay. So, uh, let me generalise that for you. We might say that a to the power of minus n is equal to 1 over a to the plus n. I'm going to put a box around that. Alright. Uh, another example then. So, a to the minus 3, for instance, would be 1 over a to the 3. Okay. Um, one final example, I'll just state it, that anything to the power of 0 is equal to 1, okay? So anything you like, I don't know, it happens to be 6 to the power of 0, that equals 1. It could be x to the power of 0, that equals 1. It could be x over y to the power of 0, that equals 1. Alright, you get the idea. Well, those are the general rules. Um, next video, I'll run through some examples of how to use that.